Hello everyone, I welcome you all to my channel WINS Academy for Competitive Exams. In this video, we are going to see signal processing, that is basics of signals in system, classification of signals and some problems that are asked in the competitive exams. Our learning objectives are what is a signal, what is a system, classification of signals and some problems. So first we are going to see what is a signal. So signal is a function that conveys some information. If you are getting some information from it means then it is called as a signal. So that function varies with respect to time, space or any other independent variable. For example consider this traffic light signal. Here we are having three colors red, yellow and green. So, if red light glows means we know we have to stop, yellow light glows means we have to wait and green light glows means we have to go. So, from this we are getting some information. So, it is called as a signal. The another example is ECG signal. So, from this also how our heart rate is. So, like that we are getting more information from it. So, it is called as a signal. So, next we are going to see what is a system. So, system is used for processing the signal. If you are giving an input signal to a system, it will process that signal and it will give the output. For example, consider an amplifier. We know amplifier is used for amplification of signal. So, here the input signal is this and amplifier output is amplified input signal. So, this is our output. So, this is called as a system. So, in short, we can say system is used for processing the signal. So, for better understanding, let us consider a practical example. Two persons are meeting. One person is asking, what is your name? Then the second person is replying, my name is Bob. So, here, what is your name is the input signal and this second person is the system. He gets the input signal and his brain processes it and he gives the output as my name is Bob. So, this person is a system and my name is Bob is the output signal. So, next we are going to see what are the types of signals. There are three types. One dimensional signal, two dimensional signal and three dimensional signal. One dimensional signal means that signal depends on only one variable. Here the signal is represented as x of t. x is the function. It depends only on the variable t. For example, it is y signal. It is a one dimensional signal. Two dimensional signal means it depends upon two variables. For example, image. So, it has length as well as breadth. So, it is a two dimensional image. f depends on x comma y. So, it depends on two variables. Then three dimensional signal. Three dimensional signal means it has three dimensions. That means it depends on three variables x, y and z. The best example is video signals. Next we are going to see the classification of signals. The signals are classified into six. So first continuous time and discrete time signals. Two deterministic and random signals. Three periodic and aperiodic signals, 4, even and odd signals, 5, energy and power signal and 6, causal and non-causal signals. First, we are going to see what is continuous time and discrete time signals. So, from the name itself, you have to understand continuous time. So, continuous time means the signal varies continuously with respect to time. So, this is our x-axis and this is time axis. So, it varies continuously with respect to time. So, at each and every interval of time, we will be having the magnitude. But in the case of discrete time signal, only at discrete intervals, we will be getting the magnitude. So, at 0, we are having some value. Then, at 2, we are having some value. At 4, we are having some value. Like that, it goes on. But in between that 0 and 2, we won't have any values. Its value is equal to 0. So, only at discrete intervals of time, you will be having the magnitude. So, this is called as discrete time signals. Always remember continuous time signals or analog signals and it is represented as x of t. t variable is used for representing continuous time signals. And for discrete time signals, n we will be using for representing discrete intervals. 
Next, we are going to see what is deterministic and random signal. So, deterministic signal means we can determine what is the next value in the next interval of time. We can predict it earlier. For example, consider this traffic light. If red light glows means we know the next light is yellow light. Then, the next light is green light. Like that, it goes on. So, we can predict it earlier. So, it is called as deterministic signal. So, for example, this is a sine wave. It continuously, it, it will be moving on like this. So, we can predict at this interval, this value means, then the next interval also, this value. So, it is called as deterministic signal. Random signal. Random signal means it will be random in nature. The best example is noise. While watching TV, what happens? Suddenly, you will be getting the screen like this. What is the meaning of this? It is affected by noise. So, it is unpredictable. We don't know when the noise will occur. So, this is the best example for the noise signal. So, next we are going to see what is periodic and aperiodic signal. So, first let us see what is periodic signal. So, periodic signal means it repeats after a particular period of interval. It is called as periodic signal. So, for continuous time signal, it should satisfy the condition x of t plus capital T is equal to x of t for all t. So, here t is the period of the signal and the smallest value of t that satisfies the above equation is called as fundamental period. So, fundamental period capital T is equal to 1 by f and omega, omega is the, this is, this omega is used for continuous time signal and this omega, this is digital omega and this is analog omega. Analog omega is used for analog signal and digital omega is used for discrete time and digital signals. So, omega is equal to 2 pi f angular frequency. That is equal to 2 pi into instead of f, we have to substitute 1 by t. So, t is equal to 2 pi by omega. Then, for discrete time signal, the condition is x of n plus capital N is equal to x of n. So, n is equal to 2 pi k divided by omega. Always remember for discrete time or digital signal, we will be using this omega. This is digital omega and this omega is the analog omega, right? So, this is the graphical representation for a periodic signal in continuous time and discrete time. So, for continuous time, the signal varies continuously with respect to time for each interval of time. It repeats the same thing. Similarly, for discrete time also. Best example is electric bell in school. After each period, the bell rings. So, it is a periodic signal. So, next we are going to see what is a periodic signal. A periodic signal means it does not repeat periodically. So, for example, consider the signal. We are having the magnitude only from minus 1 to plus 1. After plus 1, the value is equal to 0. Then before minus 1, its value is equal to 0. So, we can say this is a aperiodic signal. This is for continuous time and this is for discrete time. So, it should satisfy the condition x of t plus capital T is not equal to x of t. Similarly, x of n plus capital N is not equal to x of n. The best example is earthquake. It will not occur periodically. Next, we are going to see what is meant by even and odd signals. The another name for even and odd signal is symmetric and anti-symmetric signals. So, first let us see even signal. Even signal means consider this example. This is your y-axis and this is your x-axis. Now, if you keep a mirror in this y-axis, what happens? The right side image will be reflecting in the left side. So, if it reflects means then it is called as even signal. So, even signal, the signal x of t or x of n is called as even signal if it is identical to its time reversed counterpart. That means here for 1, what is the amplitude? The same value we will be getting here for minus 1 like that. Thus, you will be getting the same mirror image as that in the right hand side to the left hand side. So, the condition is x of minus t is equal to x of t. Similarly, for discrete time, x of minus n is equal to x of n. So, this is called as even signal or symmetric signal. Symmetric means it is symmetric along this y-axis. So, that only we are saying it is symmetric signal. Then, odd signal. 
the signal is said to be odd if it satisfies the following condition x of minus t is equal to minus x of t so here also you will be getting the mirror image but what happens means we will be getting an inverted mirror image so here at positive side we are having the image like this but at the negative side it is in opposite direction so we will be getting an inverted mirror image it is called as odd signal or anti-symmetric signal so the condition is x of minus t is equal to minus x of t and x of minus n is equal to minus x of n. So any signal can be expressed as sum of even and odd components. That is x of t is equal to x e of t plus x o of t. x e of t stands for even components of the signal and x o of t stands for odd components of the signal. So, if you want to separately find out what is the even component present in the signal means x e of t is equal to 1 by 2 into x of t plus x of minus t and x o of t is equal to 1 by 2 x of t minus x of minus t. In the case of discrete time signal, we are having x of n is equal to x e of n plus x o of n. So, x e of n is equal to 1 by 2 x of n plus x of minus n and x o of n is equal to 1 by 2 x of n minus x of minus n. The next one is energy and power signal. Always remember as a signal is said to be energy signal means then the energy value will be equal to finite and power value will be equal to 0. If a signal is said to be power signal means the energy value will be equal to infinite and power value will be equal to finite. So for energy signal, energy is finite and for power signal, power is finite. But for energy signal, power will be equal to zero. But for power signal, energy is equal to infinite. So this is the formula for calculating energy for continuous time. Similarly, for discrete time, it is this. E is equal to limit t tends to infinity integral minus t to t modulus of x of t square dt joules. Then this is the formula for calculating power for continuous time and this is for discrete time. So next we are going to see what is causal and non-causal signal. So causal signal means always remember it will be having only positive sided sequence. So for example in this signal we are having only positive sided values. So this is called as causal signal. So the condition is x of t equal to 0 for t less than 0. Less than 0 means the negative side. Its value is equal to 0. Similarly for discrete time x of n is equal to 0 for n less than 0. Then non-causal. Non-causal means it is negative sided sequence. We will be having the values only at negative sides. So a signal is said to be non-causal if x of t equal to 0 for t greater than 0 and x of n is equal to 0 for n greater than 0. Next we are going to see some problems. So first problem. This is asked in TRB 2005. If x of t is equal to cos 1 by 3t plus sin 1 by 4t is periodic. If so, its period is. So they have asked to check whether this given signal is periodic. If it is periodic means we have to find the period. So first let us calculate the period for the first term that is cos 1 by 3t. So cos 1 by 3t means this is the value for omega 1 by 3. Similarly sin 1 by 4t means sin omega t omega equal to 1 by 4. So for the first term cos 1 by 3t t1 is equal to 2 pi by omega so that is equal to 2 pi by 1 by 3 so that is equal to 6 pi second then for the second term the period is t2 is equal to 2 pi by omega that is equal to 2 pi by 1 by 4 that is equal to 8 pi second now we have to find the ratio t1 by t2 so that is equal to 6 by 8 that is equal to 3 by 4 so if it is a rational number then it is a periodic if it is not a rational number means then it is not periodic so here it is periodic signal then we have to find the period so here t is equal to 4 into t1 that is equal to 3 into t2 just cross multiply it so t is equal to 24 pi second so the answer is option b so next problem this is asked in gate examination for a periodic signal v of t equal to 30 sin 100 t plus 10 cos 300 t plus 6 sin 500 t plus pi by 4 
the fundamental frequency in radian per second. They have asked the value in radian per second. So, we have to find out the value for omega naught, right? So, first, for the first term, what is the value of omega 1? Omega 1 is equal to 100. For the second term, omega 2 is equal to 300. And for the third term, omega 3 is equal to 500. So, using this, we have to calculate what is T1 and F1. T2 and F2, T3 and F3. We know the fundamental period formula T is equal to 2 pi by omega. So, using that, we have to calculate F1, F2 and F3. Then, we have to calculate what is F0. So, F0 is equal to GCD of F1, comma F2, comma F3. So, here we have to take the common value in the numerator outside. Similarly, common value in the denominator. So, that is equal to 100 divided by 2 pi. Now, omega naught is equal to 2 pi f naught, so that is equal to 100. So, option A is the right answer. So, next problem, the period of the signal x of t equal to 8 sin 0.8 pi t plus pi by 4. So, here, what is the omega value? Omega is 0.8 pi. So, fundamental period capital T is equal to 2 pi by omega. So, that is equal to 2 pi divided by 0 0.8 pi. That is equal to 2.5 seconds. So, option D is the right answer. So, the next problem. This is also one of the important problem. We can solve it easily. The power in the signal x of t equal to 8 cos 2 pi t minus pi by 2 plus 4 sin 15 pi t is. So, no need to use the power formula, power formula, we can directly calculate it. So, power is equal to A square by 2, A is the amplitude, right? So, A square by 2, so for the first term, the A value is equal to 8 and for the second term, A value is equal to 4. So, A1 is equal to 8 and A2 is equal to 4. Power is equal to A1 square divided by 2 plus A2 square divided by 2. So, that is equal to 40 watts. So, option A is the right answer. So, next problem, if a signal f of t has the energy E and the energy of the signal f of 2t is equal to. So, if f of t is energy E means f of t will be equal to E by 2. So, option B is the right answer. So, next problem, energy of the power signal is, already we have seen for power signal, power will be finite and energy will be infinite. So, option C is the right answer. Now, we have come to the end of the session. I hope you all have understood. If you like this video, kindly subscribe it and press the bell button so that you can get the notifications regarding my future videos. Thank you.